Good afternoon. From the Legislative Building here in Regina, we have Premier Scott Moe. And joining us virtually is Saskatchewan's Chief Medical Health Officer, Dr. Sakib Shahab, as well as the CEO of the Saskatchewan Health Authority, Scott Livingstone. Premier Moe and Dr. Shahab will have, have remarks followed by time for questions. <clears throat> well, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here uh, today. Our vaccine rollout continues to lead the nation. Our team of healthcare workers in vaccine clinics across the province have now administered more than or nearly uh, 360,000 shots. That's over 30,000 doses per 100,000 person population. And Saskatchewan is the first province to meet that mark in the nation. The growing number of Saskatchewan people vaccinated may be starting to have an impact on our case numbers here. Last Thursday, Saskatchewan's seven day average peaked at 284 cases. Since then, it has now dropped to 247 cases. That's down about 13%. While that's encouraging, case numbers and hospitalizations are still too high. Uh, so we are extending the current public health orders that were set to expire on like, April the 26th by two more weeks uh, out to May the 10th. As always, they will be reviewed and renewed or revised at that point in time. And for now, we need everyone to continue doing your part. Follow all of the public health orders that are in place. When it's your turn, take your opportunity to receive a vaccination so we can stick it to COVID. Our vaccination program has reached some important milestones, yes. More than 75% of people over the age of 60 have now been vaccinated. More than 50% of those over the age of 40 have also now received their first dose. And here's why that is important. 84% of all hospitalizations and 96% of all COVID related fatalities in our province have been people over the age of 40. So by getting this group of people vaccinated first, we will significantly reduce those serious outcomes. Our age-based system continues to work well, both in terms of getting people vaccinated as quickly as possible and by reducing serious outcomes as much as possible. That said, now we have made significant pro now that we have made significant progress among older age groups, we can look at adding some, some other groups of frontline workers to the priority groups that would then be eligible for vaccination in the days ahead. As you know right now, everyone 40 and older in the far north and 48 and older in the rest of the province is eligible to receive their shot. Based on current allocation schedules, we expect to lower the province-wide eligibility age to 44 and older this Thursday, April the 22nd, and to 40 and older by sometime mid next week. When eligibility age does get down to 40 across the entire province, we are then going to prioritize all uh, all police officer, all remaining police officers and firefighters, frontline healthcare workers, uh, the remaining frontline healthcare workers, uh, corrections officers, border crossing officers, public health inspectors, as well as our teachers, our educators, and others that are working in school, uh, in school education staff. They will all become eligible once we achieve uh, that 40 uh, year old um, benchmark across the province. In the meantime, I would encourage everyone in those occupations who is now eligible based on their age and everyone else in Saskatchewan who may be eligible based on their age to get vaccinated as quickly as you're able. The only reason that we are having this discussion about who should get pri pri who should receive priority is that in this province, in this nation, we just simply don't have enough vaccines available. So for the border, that discussion is over. It ended yesterday when President Biden announced that every American is now eligible to get vaccinated. And that's because they do have access to enough vaccines. In fact, some states have more than enough. Over the past number of days, I've been speaking with the governor of North Dakota, uh, Doug Burgum, and he had said that North Dakota does have a healthy vaccine supply. They're there vaccinating people 18 and over and that they may be able to set up a vaccination cl clinics just south of the border to vaccinate Saskatchewan truckers who are there traveling uh, northbound uh, back into Canada. This is an extremely generous offer by the governor of North Dakota and by the people uh, in the state of North Dakota and one that is appreciated by, uh, by myself and by this province. One uh, that he was only able to make because their federal government has procured enough vaccines for Americans. 
We also, we also discussed the relative success of the vaccination program in North Dakota. Uh, their cases peaked at over 2,000 cases per day in a single day, as well as having more than 300 people in hospital. 46% of North Dakota residents today have now received their first dose. They are now down to about 140 cases a day. And they have 35 people in hospital. The vaccinations are working in North Dakota and they will work in other areas of the world. This week, Saskatchewan will only receive uh, just over 30,000 vaccines. That's about a two or three day supply at the pace that we are capable of moving. And as a result, we have unfortunately had to temporarily close most of our drive through clinics that we're operating. We will continue to vaccinate Saskatchewan people just as quickly as we are able, but our efforts uh, continue to be slowed down by the scarcity of vaccines as well as the often erratic supply of vaccines. So on the recommendation of uh, Dr. Shahab and like a number of other provinces we have seen move over the course of the last 48 hours, we are lowering the elig eligibility age for the AstraZeneca vaccine to 40. In the short term, uh, this isn't going to make much of a difference because unlike some other areas of Canada, uh, Saskatchewan has already used up uh, the, the bulk of the supply of AstraZeneca doses that we, we received. And what's left is already allocated to a number of appointments across Saskatchewan. But moving forward, AstraZeneca will be made available to everyone age 40 years and older. Our dedicated health workers will continue to administer vaccines just as quickly as we receive them here. And what we all need to do, and we all do have a job to do in the days ahead, um, and what we need to do in the here and now, what we need to do right now, is to continue to do everything that we can to protect ourselves and to protect those that are around us. We need to keep following all of the public health orders that are in place, all of the guidelines that have been put out before us. And when it's your turn, uh, we all need to consider rolling up your sleeve, uh, sticking it to COVID and, and receiving your vaccination. Dr. Shahab, are you on the line? Yes, I, I am, Premier. Thank you. So, um, first of all, I'll begin by offering my condolences, as we always do, to the families and friends of the eight Saskatchewan residents who have passed away due to COVID-19 over the past week. Um, and again, uh, while um, thankfully we are not seeing high rates of hospitalization in those who are older and in long-term care, we still know that COVID is a serious illness um, um, in all age groups. And, and that is why we all, as the Premier said, should step up and get vaccinated when our turn comes and abide by public health measures till that time. Um, it's really, um, um, you know, I think important to see the timeline uh, for when additional uh, essential workers can expect to be vaccinated. These essential workers have been working on the front line throughout the pandemic, keeping uh, um, our needs met um, and, and facing some risk. And again, I would encourage all persons, including essential workers, that as soon as they become eligible to step forward and receive any of the three uh, uh, vaccines that will be available in Saskatchewan, so as the Premier said, AstraZeneca, we will have limited amounts, but it can be used for anyone 40 and older now. Uh, other vaccines, uh, Pfizer can be used for 16 and older, Moderna 18 and older. And I would encourage everyone to get the vaccine that is available on that day at a clinic that they are at um, as early as possible. Uh, we have seen dramatic impact in Saskatchewan in older age groups, three weeks post-vaccination there is a rapid decline in risk of COVID uh, hospitalization and death. And we definitely want to see that continue to happen for all Saskatchewan residents currently 16 and older as vaccines become available. Um, I will just make, me, um, make a couple of comments around um, uh, the variants of concern. Um, you know, we, uh, obviously we, uh, the bulk of uh, new cases in Saskatchewan now, especially in uh, Regina, uh, southern Saskatchewan, and increasingly um, in Saskatoon, are of the B117 variety, which was first identified in the UK, which is more transmissible. And so we all have to work twice as hard to abide by public health measures uh, to keep uh, uh, transmission of COVID and especially of variants of concern as low as possible. We did have a few weeks ago a cluster of B1351, the variant first identified in South Africa in the north central part of the province, and that was quickly contained by 
uh, case investigation by public health and of course all cases and contacts doing the really important but hard job of staying isolated for the 14 days it requires for you to be cleared so that in some cases for contacts can be mean more than 14 days because it's 14 days from your last contact with the case and uh, so again it shows how important it is to follow all public health direction we're all tired of covid but that demonstrates how in, in that particular instance um, you know the v1351 was contained and now in the southwest part of the province we have a cluster of five uh, uh, variants of concern of the p1 variety that was first identified in brazil of course this has been seen throughout canada and uh, all over western canada but this is the first time we have identified it in saskatchewan and then again it speaks to people doing the right thing getting tested as soon as they have symptoms after any interprovincial travel any international travel and of course uh, we have an excellent lab system that screens all covid tests for um, variants of concern and is very ra rapidly able to do whole genome sequencing within uh, a week of first being identified the whole genome sequencing was available and public health was obviously public health um, um, uh, you know works with cases and contacts as soon as a positive test is received um, and there's you know that doesn't change once it's confirmed to a variant of concern which in this case was p1 but it just speaks to how important it is for us to continue to follow all public health measures as well as uh, public health uh, recommendations for isolation if we are either a case of covid or a contact because while our vaccination program is picking up we have to do all these other things you know abide by public health measures and isolate if we are positive or a close contact because both of these uh, approaches will ensure that our case numbers start coming down our hospitalizations and icu admissions uh, start coming down thank you Thank you, Premier Mo and Dr. Shahab. We'll take questions and we'll start on the line. Operator. We have Phil Tank with the Star Phoenix. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Premier and Dr. Shahab. I'd like to ask about the appearance, uh, if we can learn any more about the uh, Brazilian variants discovered. How concerned are you about those? Because we have seen, say, in Alberta and BC that they have caused quite a bit of uh, issues there being uh, more transmissible. And can you confirm whether any of those variants were connected to the party in Maple Creek? Dr. Morning last week. So and we don't have any linkage to uh, other uh, mass transmission events. And that wouldn't, you know, not having that linkage is not uh, surprising, I think. And, and we also know that once you have a variant of concern, in a continent like in North America or a country like in Canada, it is to some extent inevitable that they will, you know, increase anywhere in Canada. But we also have to remember that, like you said, you know, uh, compared to the original strain of COVID, we have already seen uh, that B117 is more transmissible, you know, anywhere from 60 to 100 percent more transmissible. So we have to work twice as hard. Thankfully, the B117 is covered off well with all three vaccines that are available in Saskatchewan. Uh, the P1 variant, um, we are learning more about possibly increased transmissibility. Uh, we are still learning about is it more severe or not, and we are still learning about how effective the vaccine is. So that is why we have to do everything we can to keep, you know, first of all, we have to we want to keep COVID cases as low as possible, irrespective of what strain they are. But also, we want to delay the introduction and wide dispersal of all variants. We've done fairly well with B117 that it is moving and making its way up north from uh, you know, Regina to you know, Saskatoon and points north. But for the time being, it's primarily in Regina and southern Saskatchewan. Um, you know, the South African variant is well contained. P1, this is the first time we've identified it and public health uh, is investigating all contacts so there'll be broad testing of all contacts uh, you know isolation which in some cases may extend to 24 days because your 14 days start from the last day of your contact with an infectious case which in case of a household member can be up to 10 days unless um, the case is able to isolate in a separate location this is really hard for all of us to have to isolate uh, as a case but also as a contact it disrupts our plans 
but this just shows how important this is going to be in this particular situation. And till such time that our vaccination rates are up, you know, as high as we can get 70%, 80% for all persons 18 and older, and we see our numbers declining uh, and our hospitalizations declining, as the Premier cited the example from North Dakota, it's going to be so important for us to continue to abide by public health measures uh, at, at, at a community level, but also at an individual level, and also to seek testing and follow public health recommendations for isolating if you are identified as a case or a contact. And again, you know, we've said keep your contacts as low as possible. Uh, if you are to test positive as a case, you should be able to immediately give all your close contacts uh, to public health quickly, because the quicker the public health gets that information, the quick, quick, more quickly they can work at isolating uh, uh, potential COVID uh, cases and contacts, who, which may be any of these three variants of concern. Or increasingly, I must say, there's other variants of interest that we are following from the US, from other parts of the world that we have identified in Saskatchewan as well as in Canada. They are not variants of concern yet because they may they haven't shown signals of being either more transmissible, more severe, or more vaccine resistant. But you know, this is going to be something we'll have to keep watching closely, especially till such time that we have high vaccination rates and our COVID case numbers come to very low levels. Thank you. Thank you. Follow up, Phil. <clears throat> yes, our, our, uh, the numbers of people in uh, receiving intensive care hit a new high of 51 today. And that's kind of been the trigger point across Canada for uh, in other provinces for saying, you know, we're going to increase health restrictions. Are there any plans to look at increasing health restrictions uh, at this stage? I know you're extending them, but I think we've seen Ontario, BC, Alberta, take, and even Manitoba yesterday take uh, more drastic um, measures. And some of those provinces have higher per capita or lower per capita cases than we do and, and lower new cases per capita than we do. Uh, Dr. Shab, I, I maybe just a couple of words if you want to comment on, on that as well. Uh, of course, uh, more, more, than, uh, more, than, more than welcome. With respect uh, to the, the hospitalizations here in Saskatchewan, yeah, they're, they're, they're higher than I think anyone um, would like to see them. In particular, uh, here in Regina, we do have provincial health care capacity, although with the concentration of variants of concern uh, here in Regina, we do have, uh, you know, a significant pressure. I think would be fair to say on our our, our ICU here in Regina as well as the the healthcare system uh, here in Regina. As Dr. Shahab had said, those variants of concern, the UK variant hasn't uh, been moving across the province throughout the north as as maybe quickly as as. Uh, as uh, he had expected, which is is a positive uh, thing, but uh, we do need to uh, keep an eye on our on our healthcare capacity uh, most certainly, and we are keeping an eye on that. Um, and ultimately, the the path through this, and I use the North uh, North Dakota example, is for us uh, to continue uh, to encourage folks to one follow the public health more measures that are that are in place and. I think by and large, uh, people are continuing to do that. And I would just uh, ask once more for them to pay particular attention to the public health measures that are in place at this point in time. It's likely one of the most crucial, uh, the next couple of weeks are, are probably some of the most crucial time um, that we have been in in the, uh, in the COVID-19 pandemic, in particular here uh, in, our, in an, our capital city and the surrounding area. And then the second piece is, is uh, the second job that we all have to do is when it is your turn, uh, go out and receive the first vaccine that becomes available to you. They're all effective. Uh, they're all safe uh, for your age category. And ultimately, the the way for lower hospitalization numbers is for us to uh, continue to uh, provide and accept those vaccines into the general the general population. Uh, Dr. Shahab, any more on on that uh, topic? Yeah. So obviously, this is something we continue to watch very closely. And you know, we did extend um, um, measures that we had in place prior. Uh, to um, uh, Christmas, you know, no household bubbles, worship sizes capped to 30, and all other measures throughout Saskatchewan are in effect. And of course, tighter measures for Regina. Regina, like the Premier mentioned, our cases have plateaued. They are not continuing to go up, but they are still generating significant hospitalizations in younger cohorts, uh, which again is very hard, you know, I think, uh, while, uh, you know, deaths, de deaths unfortunately do happen and, and maybe less common, nevertheless, it is not a trivial thing to be hospitalized and to be in ICU at any age. Um, so obviously that's a concern for Regina. 
Um, you see in the way it's a concern increase in southern Saskatchewan, they don't have the same orders that Regina has, but we've seen how in many cases businesses, restaurants themselves have been promoting uh, takeout and curbside pickup. Um, individuals have been reducing, um, um, you know, the number of contacts when they're out and about grocery shopping. Uh, again, we have to be really uh, watchful for all workplaces, especially essential workplaces, really in, uh, improving uh, COVID protocols. All those measures are having an impact. Um, you know, Saskatoon, we are very concerned because the proportion of variants of concern in Saskatoon uh, is now, um, you know, at around uh, uh, about half of the um, uh, uh, variants of, uh, of, of the uh, cases in Saskatoon are variants of concern, around 40%. So again, um, so while Saskatoon has seen a relatively stable case number or around 40 to 50 a day and test policy is 5.6, they really need to stay the course. We don't want Saskatoon to escalate like Regina. And so far with current measures, it seems to be working. But again, the, you know, everyone needs to diligently follow all the guidelines. Uh, you know, one or two super spreader events like unfortunately happened in the Southwest can tip the balance to um, rapid growth. And so obviously uh, we are at a critical point right now. On a positive note, vaccinations are accelerating 40 and older, and then people who are more likely to be exposed, essential workforce uh, in many areas. But at the same time, we need to stay the course over the next four to six weeks at least to keep our numbers as low as possible as vaccines uh, get into arms and have the two or three weeks post vaccination that it takes for you to get some protection at an individual level. And each person who is vaccinated protects themselves, protects their household, and protects the community. So I think both these measures are going to be critical. Scott, would you have any any comments on the comments on the uh, the provincial uh, capacity or 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 not on that? You touched on it, Premier. I just you know to reiterate your comments around ICU capacity. As you know, we are on bypass in Regina, and those Regina cases in ICU represent two-thirds of all cases across the province. So it's important as Dr. Shahab, and you've already highlighted how important it is for folks to double down on um, not just getting vaccinated, but also adhering to all public health orders and getting tested as quickly as possible so that we can follow up on cases and, and uh, get in front of this virus. Um, if, if other ICUs in the province start to experience what Regina does, we're gonna be in real trouble. Um, and, and we've talked about that a lot, but it's, uh, it's a real risk for the system and it's important that people understand that risk. We'll take, we'll take another question on the line, operator. We have Laura Sharpaletti with CBC. Hi there, thanks for your time. Um, my question is back again about the uh, the P1 variant. Um, we've heard from multiple doctors and, and, and uh, people around Canada who say that uh, this variant is, is a lot more dangerous than the other ones that we've been seeing. And I'm just wondering if there's a contingency, contingency plan for, you know, um, increasing that testing capacity and, and contact tracing capacity in case this was to get out of control. Dr. Shaw? I think one thing that we can be very proud of is that for the first time ever, our testing rate per 100,000 is above the recommended level throughout Saskatchewan. And I think that speaks to the fact that everyone in Saskatchewan, south, rural, uh, urban, north, ru uh, north, Saskatoon, far north, everyone is getting tested in record numbers. Our daily test rates are well around the 3,000 plus per day. And that is going to be really critical. And the second is, of course, um, we have to recognize that the, at the first sign of symptoms, isolating, not going to work or school, getting tested, and that quickly informs who your contacts are, having the smallest number of contacts, having that list ready for public health. The more quickly we do these actions, it doesn't matter if it's an uh, original strain, which variant it is, these basic fundamental actions are essential to keep our numbers low. And of course, you know, till such time that we are vaccinated, our case numbers are low, you know, maintaining that physical distance when we're out and about, wearing a mask in indoor public places are all critical actions. Uh, you know, the weather is great. You can safely do a lot of things outdoors, maintain your physical distance, but having, um, you know, being safe outdoors means that maintaining that physical distance, uh, you know, we've seen some transmission events where People were outdoors, but were maybe meeting over food or passing other items back and forth without maintaining that two meter distance. That can still really result in transmission even outdoors. 
but generally we have seen outdoors is much better than indoors and over the next you know six to eight weeks um, spending time outdoors more uh, and following all the other things I mentioned indoors is going to be really important. Follow up? Follow up, Laura? Yes, thanks for that. Um, so a colleague of mine is working on a story about Lakeview Fine Foods. Their staff is mostly under 40 and not eligible for vaccines, um, but their counterparts at like Safeway, et cetera, are because of the pharmacy there. Now, the owner is saying that it gives preference to bigger stores. Um, will you consider adding, uh, again, I know we ask this every week, would, would you consider asking, uh, adding grocery store clerks and workers to, to the eligibility list even if they're in smaller stores without a, a pharmacy. There's a, uh, I just have a few comments, Dr. Shahab, if you want to say uh, something here as well. But, you know, we've, we've always said that we're going to preserve the capacity of uh, uh, the nation leading capacity of delivering vaccines that we have uh, here in Saskatchewan. In fact, this week we're adding our, our pharmaceutical capacity to our appointment based system as well as uh, we're still going to be running as many drive throughs as we can. Uh, and as we have vaccines for over the course of the, the next couple of weeks, given that we're only receiving about 31 or 32,000 vaccines uh, here um, this week. There, there's a number of, of uh, entities I know and, and workplaces that would, uh, would, and would uh, you know, request uh, to be prioritized. Um, what we're trying to do is to prioritize some of those uh, that are at a higher risk of, of contracting COVID when we hit uh, the 40 year age mark given the 40 and over is the, the, the age groups that have the most severe outcomes when they, when they do contract COVID. But so to, to, what we're attempting to do is prioritize some of these, uh, some of these work areas where people are obviously in contact uh, with a number of people without, without um, uh, compromising. We want to complement, not compromise uh, the capacity of the system and why we uh, had, had chosen those larger uh, workplaces that may have a grocery store and a pharmacy operating is the pharmacies are receiving uh, their their uh, their vaccines uh, this week. A number of uh, pharmacies in a number of communities across the province. More uh, coming next week. Is it's fairly uh, straightforward for them to turn around and and vaccinate their staff as quickly as possible. That being said, uh, we're still and why and why we are uh, continuing to prioritize the capacity of the system is we're going to move to 44. Uh, years of age across the province later this week, 40 uh, by mid next week, and we're going to continue to uh, deliver uh, at that high capacity of, of doses per day, as many as we receive, so that we're able to continue down through those years, ultimately get to where everyone 18 and over is eligible for a vaccine, which is in essence uh, prioritizes everyone in the province and it's our hope to get there as quickly and as soon as possible so that everyone in, in, this, uh, in this particular setting and everyone else in, in every other setting uh, in the province that is over 18 will have access uh, to those vaccines and then we won't be discussing um, you know who's prioritized who isn't we'll all have equal priority at that at that point in time and we saw uh, just this this uh, this I guess late last week it was uh, that President Biden had uh, gotten to that point in the U.S. and they obviously have access to a, a larger proportion of vaccines per person than, than we do here in Canada. Uh, as everyone in the U.S. now is over the age of, I believe it's 18, is eligible to receive a vaccine uh, throughout the USA. We hope to get there in Saskatchewan as, as quickly as we're able and that will um, you know, as, as I said, that will end the, the conversation around who's prioritized and who isn't. We'll take our next question in the room. Murray? Uh, I think follow up to Phil's question and for Dr. Shahab, I think mostly, if we're seeing 106 cases in Regina today in record ICUs across the province, um, how concerned or how much do you share the concern of the ICU doctors in uh, last week that Regina's the problem, that the Regina ICU is at a near breaking point? And in that regard, what did you recommend specifically to deal with the Regina situation that does appear to be somewhat different than elsewhere, but certainly is something that would seem to require something more, more direct? Yeah, so it is very uh, concerning that just Regina on its own and, and maybe some communities in the South are generating high um, ICU and hospitalization numbers in Saskatchewan, primarily in Regina, uh, but to a lower extent in uh, other southern communities and in Saskatoon. 
and obviously uh, you know if what is happening in regina was to replicate in saskatoon other communities that would be put a tremendous pressure on the, the uh, you know acute care resources um so right now uh, the specific measures in regina are having some impact but we also know that and we've seen this in uh, in 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 europe and other parts of canada you know public health measures have a role but it is also our individual actions you can have strong public health measures but it's you know if our individual actions are not very uh, uh, thoughtful and deliberate in terms of minimizing a number of contacts um, being very careful if we have to work outside the home our covid protocols at work must be airtight not just at the at a workstation but also during break time uh, employers need to support uh, staff to be home if they are isolating or sick uh, you don't want someone coming to work because they have to if they're symptomatic um ready access to testing which we have um support for isolating at home or at a third side if required all those measures are going to be critical and then even if we go out and about grocery shopping you know in regina of course uh, you can only order takeout but everywhere else in saskatchewan you know relying more on curbside pickup and takeout being very thoughtful when we go around grocery shopping just one person from a household if possible spending as little time in a grocery store wearing your best mask and uh, maintaining that physical distance all these measures are going to be critical so you know regina is plateauing right now it's not escalating thankfully but it's not coming down so still a high level of concern um and and we need to watch that very closely and of course southern communities also have trended up a bit um they have to be watched very closely Saskatoon again I think is stable at around 40 50 cases a day um with predominant variants of concern now so obviously it's a very um, um it's a very um you know critical situation but on the other hand uh you know Saskatchewan has been moving vaccine as quickly as it comes into arms I think for a large province it's a credit to uh, the Saskatchewan health authority staff and the logistics people that vaccine is into arms throughout Saskatchewan as soon as it comes i think pivoting for rapid deployment at a younger age in regina of all three vaccines including astrazeneca has actually saved lives over the last four weeks so you know that ability to be nimble and pivot to do drive throughs as vaccine becomes available has been critical in uh, moderating the surge in regina in addition to public health measures and everything we as individuals do wherever possible working from home as much as possible is critical and modeling that if you don't have to be physically at a work site because your work doesn't require to you i think you should be at home and i think that's a critical thing for um uh, in all workplaces for us to model so that others don't feel obliged to come to work if they can work from home but i think all these things are going to be critical over the next uh, you know 6 to 8 weeks uh, till such time that we have the bulk of our population 18 and older vaccinated a follow up dr dr shahab are you then recommending greater enforcement for regina or more restrictions have you recommended that to the premier because i'm not seeing it in regina stores i'm not seeing it in other locations where uh people are any less restrictive about moving about than they were before as long as stores are open they go and shop in stores and obviously most stores don't like enforcing those kind of rules so are you willing to recommend either stricter enforcement or stricter rules in order to curb uh, what you're seeing right now so it doesn't spread in the next 6 to 8 weeks as you say and have you rec uh, recommended that particularly given what uh, the, the concerns raised last week by the ICU doctors in the bulk of our workplaces and many of those workplaces are essential workplaces so they are not specially covered by the order and that is why even you know even though you know a lot of public places museums and other public places casinos are closed restaurants and bars are only doing curbside pickup the transmission really um, the bulk of the transmission is happening in workplaces many of which are essential workplaces and it is hard because many of those workplaces have done really well uh, during the winter during a fall wave uh, winter wave but right now because of b117 you know they really have to improve their protocols 
and many have, but I think that is going to be a key a component that in addition to the orders in place, you know, minimizing transmission in indoor workplaces where people have to be at work and really looking at each workplace and seeing which employee has to be physically present and who can work safely from home because each little bit counts. Even if you haven't had a work uh, outbreak in your workplace for the last 14 months, going that extra distance now counts because, you know, multiple small outbreaks, three cases here, two cases here, there are what's adding up to the numbers. And thankfully, I must say, we have not seen super spread events in Regina or for the most part, you know, in most places in Saskatchewan and in Saskatoon. That is also critical. The, you know, we can't have gatherings, any gatherings inside households, um, uh, outdoor gatherings up to 10 and uh, with no food or sharing of items. Uh, worship sizes capped at 30. So the rules are there, but we're also paying special attention to that because that is also going to be critical. And I think, you know, while enforcement is important, and but we all know the drill. And, you know, I still feel that while we may sometimes feel that, you know, a store is more crowded, but then the answer to that is go when it's less crowded, when you go maintain your physical distancing. Uh, you know, we need to help each other out here um, as much as we can to reduce uh, crowding uh, or the curbside pickup. A lot of it is having an impact, but we need to stay the course for the next four to six weeks. or stricter rules for Regina? Well, I think as Dr. Shahab had indicated earlier, the, <clears throat> the cases, and it's early, early days uh, where we peaked last Thursday, and, and maybe uh, they, you know, they have been down uh, since last Thursday, down about 13% on our seven-day average. But that no means, I, I think, uh, should we consider uh, that a trend. But it does, is an indication that the, the measures that we have in Regina in place, uh, which are uh, much stricter than, than many other areas of the province, um, would hopefully seem to be uh, working to some degree. That alongside uh, the fact that we have uh, prioritized Regina over the course of the last, well, month or so now, uh, with any uh, additional vaccines that we did uh, receive provincially. I, I think of the, the first 15,000 AstraZeneca vaccines we ran through a drive through clinic uh, uh, here in Regina and the, the uh, very successful drive through clinic that ran here over the course of the last uh, uh, the last number of days as well and 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 so we do continue to uh, increase higher proportions of people here in in the province i have said many times we're we're about 33 percent of all of those that are eligible over the age of 18 to ever receive a vaccine uh, have received one here in saskatchewan uh, when you get into the higher age groups for example 60 and over we're we're at 75 percent uh, vaccinated which is a, a very strong number 50 and over 63 percent and 40 and over, which is uh, relevant to our conversation here today, both in the way of, of AstraZeneca now being uh, available for those folks 40 and older, as well as when we hit 40, we're going to uh, shift uh, to a number of uh, frontline, uh, prioritizing a number of frontline workers alongside our age-based system. But 40 and over, uh, we now have 51% of, uh, of Saskatchewan residents uh, vaccinated. So, um, you know, as we receive them and, and we have a, a little bit of a tougher week or 10 days ahead of us on on the the vaccines that are being delivered uh, but we most certainly are going to make those available to saskatchewan people as quickly as as possible and like i said by mid next week we'll we should be getting down to that 40 and over age group which will then open up the opportunity uh, for either at the pharmacy or through the sha uh, system for our teachers and in-school staff um, our correctional guards, uh, the, any remaining police and firefighters uh, that we might have, uh, public health uh, inspectors, our border service agents to uh, make an appointment uh, get, and, to, uh, and to get vaccinated. And at the same time, we're going to continue trying to creep down as quickly as we can through the ages and get to 18 and over, which ultimately uh, prioritizes everyone. We'll take another question in the room. Stephanie? Um, just a little bit more on that point. With the delay that we're seeing with the vaccine shipments, has your timeline changed at all? I think it was originally mid-June was your goal for the first dose for all um, adults in the province. So has that changed because of the, the shipments? Well, I guess it always depends on uptake. Um, and we're hoping for you know at least a 70% uptake across uh, the population. We've seen what's happened in North Dakota in um, you know in a, a jurisdiction where they had much higher numbers. Uh, if you go a few months back with a 
you know, they're at 45 or 46 percent uptake, uh, one dose in their, uh, in their state right now, a state of about 765,000 people where we've seen the hospitalizations, most importantly, uh, really fall off. They still have some cases each and every day, but their hospitalizations are down to about 35 from a high of uh, over 300. And, and so we, uh, you know, most certainly are hoping that, that we'll get a, a higher uh, uptake than, than 45% and shooting ultimately for 70%. As far as the time frames go, we'll be down to 40 uh, um, by mid next week. Uh, we feel that uh, although we do have a, a difficult 10 days ahead of us with the vaccine supplies that we're receiving, about 31, 32,000 of Pfizer each week, our Moderna shipment was cut drastically, as we all know, which has uh, been problematic for you know a number of rural areas uh, in the province. We've had to reschedule, I believe, roughly about 9,000 appointments again, which is is problematic uh, in the the vaccine delivery plan that we have. Um, we'll receive another shipment of 30,000 uh, Pfizer before the end of the month. And, uh, and trying to incorporate our, our pharmaceutical uh, capacity now. But uh, as we know, uh, it looks like uh, in the early days of May that we are going to uh, increase. In fact, I think we'll see uh, you know, largely increased Pfizer deliveries. We're hoping for a Moderna schedule that will, involve, will include uh, increases as well. And, and we'd, like, we'd like to see some more AstraZeneca arrive in, in the province as well. But um, for certain, uh, and the, I think the Prime Minister had announced it the other day, um, that that our Pfizer uh, procurements are going to increase starting in what we hope is the first week of May, and I, I believe it is the first week of May, and that's going to really allow us to ramp up that pharmaceutical capacity we have, uh, ensure our SHA appointment system uh, is in place, and uh, and and maybe even uh, get us to a point where we can reactivate some of the drive-throughs uh, for these priority groups, and then also to continue working through the age groups uh, down into. Um, you know, the middle of May, which is which is the target when we had hoped to make it, vaccines accessible to all of those 18 and over. Um, that's still our hope and our target is that we'll be able to achieve that uh, by sometime uh, in in or about the middle of May. Um, that that is a very ambitious target, um, and it's one that we, uh, you know, really hope that Saskatchewan people will, uh, you, you know, look forward to and getting you know, taking the opportunity to make their appointment and, and ultimately get their. Uh, their vaccine when at the first opportunity that they're eligible. Follow up? Um, yes, we're still seeing you know, hearing from people almost every day who have um, you know hesitations to getting vaccinated, specifically AstraZeneca. I'm just wondering maybe a question for Dr. Shahab. Have we seen any negative reactions in the province to to I guess any of the vaccines? Um, Dr. Shahab, do you want to uh, make a few comments there and then I, I, I probably have just a short comment as well. I think you know Many of us, myself, many of my colleagues, we went when we were eligible and we got the vaccine that was offered to us. I was offered AstraZeneca, I got AstraZeneca. If I was today, if I was eligible today and I went to a clinic and was offered any of the vaccines approved for use in Canada, I would take whichever vaccine is available. That is critical. This is not the time to hesitate or to vaccine shop. A vaccine only works once it's in your arm and has that two or three weeks to work. So sitting and waiting for a vaccine of your choice doesn't help you, it doesn't help your household or your community. Um, and I think while we do hear of situations where individuals may be hesitant and may want to wait for another vaccine if and when that's available, we've also seen a lot of interest in people saying, you know, AstraZeneca is licensed in Canada 18 and older, why can't we have it? Why is this? is a limit 55 and that's why with consultation with NACI we are safely now allowing AstraZeneca 40 and older can get the vaccine in other parts of the world in the UK it's available for 30 and older um, the bulk of the vaccination in the UK is AstraZeneca and then followed by Pfizer half and half uh, most likely so you know all over the world uh, all licensed vaccines are being used to their fullest extent and should be used and in, in Saskatchewan, those are, for the most part, Pfizer, to a lesser extent, Moderna, but with some challenges with supply recently. And AstraZeneca, you know, we are sitting on very small amounts of AstraZeneca right now because people have stepped forward and, and, and had AstraZeneca and all vaccines, including AstraZeneca, have saved lives. So I think none of us should be hesitant. We should trust that Health Canada approves vaccines that are safe and effective. We should take that the first vaccine that's available to us. And the quicker we do that, the quicker, you know, we will see our case numbers come down and we can exit the worst parts of the pandemic, hopefully, 
by you know uh, mid to late June. I, I would just add. I, I would just add to that. We we don't have enough vaccines uh, in Saskatchewan or Canada for any degree of vaccine shopping. Uh, all of the vaccines that are offered are safe, um, and they do prevent the most serious health outcomes, and they do prevent uh, death. Um, all all four uh, that are that are qualified in, or approved in Canada, um, including AstraZeneca, and the three ultimately that we have received here. Um, maybe just a couple of comments on on the uh, the variability in the conversation around uh, AstraZeneca and it. It hasn't been helpful, and I, I would just precurse, and I will end those comments with the same statement that all of the vaccines that are offered are safe for you, safe for your age group. Um, but what we've seen is uh, Health Canada that has um, repeatedly said that AstraZeneca is safe for those uh, those over 18 uh, here in Canada. We've seen NACI, uh, the NACI group, uh, uh, really uh, have have some challenges with the recommendations in particular that they have around AstraZeneca and have changed those. Uh, from from time to time, and 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 now really are not commenting on on uh, you know the Health Canada um, recommendation of of it is safe for those folks 18 and over. And with all due respect uh, to the uh, to to my friend Dr. Shahab, I think if you peek behind the the curtain at a, at a NASI meeting, you would see a uh, you know a conversation of dueling doctors um, with their various opinions on uh, precisely how how this vaccine could should and would be uh, administered. But we do see the Health Canada, which doesn't help. Uh, the conversation around uh, assuring uh, Canadians that it is a safe vaccine has been uh, used widely and saved many, many lives, probably as many as any vaccine around the world uh, when you look at places like the UK um, and many others. Um, we have a federal health minister that has uh, come forward and said it's not her job to recommend uh, whether or not uh, or what the age group uh, should be uh, for uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine. But uh, to his credit, and you won't hear this from me often, but to his credit, the Prime Minister has probably provided uh, as much clarity around the AstraZeneca vaccine and whether or not uh, it's a safe vaccine to take by announcing today that he's going to receive uh, the AstraZeneca. We, we in Saskatchewan uh, have a, a very credible source in Dr. Shahab uh, that has received his AstraZeneca uh, vaccine, but I, I would credit the Prime Minister for stepping forward uh, as it is the first vaccine that he, he is eligible to receive and publicly stating that he will be uh, taking that that vaccine and if it's good enough uh, for the Prime Minister I think uh, Canadians uh, should should take a note from that. Um, the, the best clarity uh, next to the Prime Minister today of course uh, that we have had in Saskatchewan around uh, being clear on on the safety of all of our vaccines in particular AstraZeneca has been from Dr. Shahab and his team who have come out uh, today, uh, you know, in in very earnest and but very forceful fashion, and say uh, this is a safe vaccine for for Saskatchewan people that are age 40 and over, and that's where that's where we're going to provide it. It doesn't impact to a large degree the vaccines that we currently have, um, as they are allocated for our appointment system uh, across the province and be, are being delivered as we speak. Um, but if we are to receive additional doses of vaccine and we're able to fit those in, we most certainly would. We'll take our next question on the line, operator. We have Lara Famana with 650 CKOM. Thank you so much for um, taking my questions. Um, Dr. Shahab and, and Premier Mo, we've heard over and over again throughout the last year um, the talk about personal responsibility and that people need to follow guidelines, they need to be personally responsible for their actions and so forth. Um, with case rates remaining as high as they are, um, are you suggesting, implying um, that there are a lot of people out there who aren't being responsible? Uh, Dr. Job, you no, want me? I, I would, I would I, say no. Actually, the bulk of the people are being extremely responsible. But the challenges we ha have are the following: that with more transmission remains of concern, even settings that were to do excellent COVID protocols, low risk for transmission, namely many essential workplaces are not now having transmission. So that's why, and I've been saying this now for about six to eight weeks, all workplaces need to and have revised their COVID protocols, you know, making sure that there's physical distancing at work, there's mask use in indoor places and workplaces where you are in an indoor place with others who are not from your household, employers providing where that two meter distance can't be maintained, employers, but providing the best PPE available to non-healthcare workers, which includes, uh, in many cases, you know, for example, in personal care services, a medical mask and a face shield. All those things are and remain critical and, and, and are doubly critical now with variants of concern. And, you know, it's no one's fault that if, uh, you know, you are an essential worker, you're working hard, 
in a grocery store, in personal care services, in, 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 in a gas station. It's no one's fault that transmission happens, but we all need to do everything we can to, you know, as employers and employees who have to work outside the home to minimize transmission and special caution around break times, uh, you know, avoiding carpooling as much as possible, uh, working within a cohort when you can't maintain that two meter distance. Um, all those things are going to be critical um, for those who can work from home uh, for as long as possible till such time that we're all fully vaccinated. That is critical. And again, where even where you can, so in Regina, you can only order takeout, but the rest of the province, even if you can go to a restaurant or go to, into a retail location, ordering more curbside pickup, takeout, going when it's less crowded, uh, maintaining that physical distance, going in a very deliberative way. We've been doing that throughout the pandemic in March 2020, in the fall, you know, pre-Christmas shopping. Um, we, we did that in a way that our case numbers came down. And that we need to revisit all of those things. And at the end of the day, it is our individual behaviors. A lot of these uh, orders kind of facilitate some of that where required. Uh, and of course, enforcement is there to use when there's latent disregard. But at the end of the day, it ha is, has been and will always be about our individual actions. And the vast majority of residents are actually taking those actions. And although our numbers are very concerning, you know, we can see what's happening in Western Europe and in other parts of Canada. And again, you know, this is the time really to pull together and really minimize um, any risk of transmission as much as we can. But if transmission does happen again, staying home if you're unwell, getting tested, having your list of contacts ready, that's the second layer, that uh, the offensive strategy. Prevention is number one, quickly isolating as a case or contact is number two. And of course, um, you know, we don't want to see anyone go to hospital, but, you know, unfortunately, while on a positive note, we're not seeing, you know, high numbers of hospitalizations and deaths in people 70 and older, you know, um, you know, we are concerned that because the variants are more transmissible and maybe more severe, we are seeing high hospitalizations and the people who are now becoming eligible for vaccinations, 40 and older, and then ultimately 30 and older. And I think that is going to be critical. And secondly, very quickly, you know, apart from workplaces, the second transmission side is unfortunately the household because, um, and you know, we've seen that in the far north, northwest, that if you have crowding in the household, it's very difficult to prevent transmission. That's where assisted isolation sites have been so critical. Uh, we now have capacity to, you know, assist in isolated, uh, isolating if you can't safely isolate at home in any situation where you know um, public health and social services will assist and i think that where that is required is also going to be a critical tool for the next few weeks to minimize secondary transmission within the household but again you know we all need to comply with uh, isolating if as a case or as a contact is hard to isolate uh, for 14 days but that is going to be especially critical as well so a lot of it relates to public health orders and enforcement but the bulk of this is, has been, is, and will always be our individual actions. And, and for the most part, there's a high level of compliance. It is not our fault that we are facing waves of concern, um, but we are facing them and we need to deal with them. I would just agree with everything Dr. Schaub said. Follow up, Laura. Um, we're hearing a lot more um, appointments uh, that have been canceled aren't being clearly or effectively uh, communicated with uh, people who book those appointments, especially in, in some rural areas. Do you think that the appointment booking system um, and the notification for cancellations is going as smoothly as it can be, or are there some bumps in that? Uh, there, there will be some challenges. Uh, Scott Livingston uh, will speak specifically to those, but I would say uh, due to the Moderna shipment that has been delayed, uh, uh, at least one, once, um, at least twice, and, and possibly even a third time, if I'm not certain on the third uh, delay. Uh, we have had a number of appointments that we have had to rebook. The Moderna shipments, as we know, the Moderna vaccine was being utilized in a number of uh, um, more rural locations here in the province. So, you know, th this is just another example of, uh, of an erratic uh, delivery schedule and a reduced delivery schedule that has, uh, I know, caused uh, tremendous uh, challenges uh, throughout uh, the SHA, uh, throughout uh, the folks that are, are, 
are operating uh, and and planning our our vaccine rollout here in the province, and um, and it's ultimately at the end of the day the the very crux of uh, of the challenge that we have here in Canada is uh, a lack of access a lack of access to uh, the uh, sustainable supply of vaccines and enough vaccines in in short enough order. Uh, but specific, uh, Scott, if you wanted to make a few comments to uh, some some of the different ways that we book and. And maybe uh, you know some of the challenges that 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 presents in rebooking of some of these appointments, and maybe how many uh, due to the 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 Moderna um, the Moderna changes in supply reductions in supply that we've received. You you certainly covered most of it. It is certainly not a fault of the system itself, the booking system or the phone lines. It's really the erratic nature of the delivery, particularly around Moderna uh, and in those communities that you've pointed out that has been a challenge where we're not just canceling single appointments, in some cases, two appointments because of the delay with short notice for Moderna. We are working hard to try to correct um, that and streamline that process. And part of what we'll be doing going forward is not booking out as far in advance so that we can be more um, reactive to available supply for those individuals across the province. Um, certainly, we, we don't want to cancel any appointments, but as the Premier has already pointed out, the erratic nature of the supply, particularly around Moderna, has been the single biggest factor. Um, and we are working hard with the communities and our clinics across the province to mitigate any impacts at all on patients. But it's unfortunate uh, to, to the numbers. You know, recently, Premier already talked about the 9,000 Moderna appointments that we booked, but I think it's, it's well over 21,000 appointments that we've had to rebook strictly because of the erratic supply of Moderna, which has been problematic. And, and as Premier had already pointed out, we still don't know what that supply will look like for May, but we're hoping uh, that uh, not only are we going to see some big numbers of Moderna, but it'll actually arrive when they tell us it's going to arrive. And credit goes to all, and credit goes to all the, uh, the the folks that are working hard on on trying to rebook these appointments. The, the, the booking system has worked remarkably well, and a credit to, to all of those those people that worked on that as well. And and uh, you know we we do ask Saskatchewan people that need to rebook uh, their appoint their appointments. Some patients, uh, it is a you know it's been thrust on us uh, by the erratic supply of Moderna Moderna deliveries. Uh, we're doing our very best to provide uh, you with a vaccine as quickly as we're able. We have time for one final question, operator. <coughs> we have Anna McMillan with Global. Hi there. Premier Mo, you were on the radio, I think, last week discussing a potential return to some degree of normal. Uh, do you think it's at all premature to be talking about getting back to normal? What was the conversation had today about variants and current case counts? I, I would say it's premature to be announcing uh, us moving forward to getting back to normal at this point in time. We uh, we have one job to do. Uh, well, we have a few jobs to do in the here and now as, as all of us, as, as individual residents of the province. And uh, the first the first job we have to do, I would sit, put forward, is to follow the public health measures that are in place uh, for the, the foreseeable future. It is uh, of, of crucial importance that we all prioritize um, our actions uh, each and every day. The second thing I would encourage Saskatchewan people to do is as soon as you're eligible uh, by age or whether you're one of these priority groups uh, to make an appointment and, and receive your vaccine as quickly uh, as you are as you are able. Um, but when you look at other jurisdictions around around the world and the vaccination rates that they have achieved and what that has done for uh, their case rates, what that has done for their hospitalization rates, um, the and, and and you look at where Saskatchewan is with 33% of our eligible uh, people over the age of 18 that have have uh, received a vaccine. We have now 51% of people over the age of 40. Um, and as I say, 84% of our hospitalizations do come from people over the age of, have come from people over the age of 40. And 96% and of our fatalities have come from people over the age of, of 40. Uh, we're going to be making that vaccine available to everyone over the age of 40 by, um, by next week. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, I, I would say that in the, the weeks ahead, um, there will be an opportunity for Saskatchewan to uh, really look at, um, given our, our hospitalizations uh, would, would ultimately be decreasing at that point in time, our case rates uh, decreasing as our vaccination rates increase. Understanding there's a lag between vaccination date and when they ultimately are, are effective, um, that we, we should be prepared for what that looks like. And so it, today I would say it's premature for us to be uh, putting forward you know, dates and times as to when this may occur. But in the uh, in the weeks ahead, I think it is a conversation that, um, you know, given given uh, continued um, delivery of vaccines, 
um, and those vaccines doing what we've seen them do in other jurisdictions, uh, that this is a conversation that Saskatchewan people are ultimately looking for. Follow up, Anna? Yes, uh, I'm just hoping, you know, with that in mind, can you just provide a bit more detail on how vaccination is going to work for frontline workers going forward? You know, once everyone over 40 is vaccinated, is it essentially just going to open up and be a first come, first serve for those workers? Well, we'll have, uh, you, know, you know, as we get into the first days of May, where we are hopeful that our delivery schedule is going to increase, in particular with our Pfizer, our Pfizer vaccine uh, accessibility. Um, Scott Livingston had, had said we're also, you know, very hopeful. We don't know yet what Moderna will look like, but that also would be increased sometime in, in early May. And then we would be uh, hopeful for a period of time that we would be able to continue on with, uh, with all of the um, methods of, of vaccine delivery that we that we are able to, uh, the SHA um, appointment system, which has been very effective and really the core of uh, of our vaccine delivery system throughout our time thus far, our drive-throughs, as well as we are making vaccines now available to pharmacies uh, who have a you know very large capacity. I think pharmacies actually delivered 70% of the flu vaccines um, last year, so we will have that capacity to deliver the vaccines ultimately. Um, that are that are are delivered to us. So when we do hit that 40 age category, we're going to split our focus to uh, continue to drive down that age to 40, from 40 to 38 to 36 to 34, as as low as we can. Um, but we're at the same time, uh, we're also going to prioritize a number of of uh, folks, essential workers, essentially uh, in many cases, um, and so that they will be able to um, to receive their vaccine. And we're just working out what the details of that. Uh, will look like whether it's a letter, uh, you know, letter of employment from their employer that they could present to ensure that they would uh, be able to make their appointment either at their pharmacy um, uh, through the SHA system or if we do have a drive through operating in the area, uh, that letter of employment would be uh, a suffice as well. With a little bit to work out on the, uh, the actual log logistics of it, um, but I'm sure uh, working with each of these organizations uh, that we'll be able to, uh, you know, come to some, some uh, uh, you know, some agreement of uh, identifying them quite quickly. That concludes today's update. Thank you for joining us.